Hello, my name is Andrew Clausen. I'm a PhD student at the Thayer School of Engineering at Dartmouth College, and I'll just get started right away. So I'll be presenting on the paper titled Method for Inkjet Printing P.PSS Polymer Electrodes on Piezoelectric PDF TRF Fibers for the session on Emerging Materials for Flexible and Printable Systems. So if we look at the background of this work, uh, piezoelectric polymers such as PVDF TRFE have become popular choices in the development of flexible and conformable biomedical devices. For example, our group has previously developed flexible energy harvesting and pressure sensing devices on pacemaker leads, making use of the flexibility of these PVDF thin films. You can see kind of an image here of this on the top right. And we've been investigating the use of other novel flexible materials such as conductive polymers um, as electrodes for further improving the mechanical properties of our devices. However, patterning of these materials can be difficult. And so that's where inkjet printing comes in, which is a really common high throughput and easily scalable method for patterning of these materials. And it's very well suited for the development of future flexible electronic devices. However, we face a major obstacle when we inkjet print these electrodes on these nanofibrous films. Um, and that's leakage of the printed ink through, um, through the fibrous material. Um, which leads to electrical shorting in these capacitive-like structures um, that these piezoelectric devices often are, are made of. And so this really hinders our ability to utilize the massive benefits associated with the use of inkjet printing. And so our approach to solving this problem is really simple. And so we want to create a physical separation layer between the top and bottom electrodes in this nanofiber device um, that will block any leakage of the inkjet printed materials. In this paper, we develop an approach to do so um, using a PEMS solution to infill the pores of the PDF TRFE fiber matrix. Um, and this physical uh, separation layer allows us to print conductive P.PSS electrodes on either side of the PDMS and fiber substrate um, to create an all polymer piezoelectric device. So we can, um, we can take a brief look at kind of how we do that, our, our overall fabrication steps to allow um, this inkjet printing of these all polymer devices. And so the first step is to electrospin PVDF TRFE nanofibers. We do so using an 18 weight percent solution with a flow rate of uh, 0.6 mLs per hour and a rotating drum collector to aid in, in the fiber alignment. Next, after we form these fibers, uh, we spin coat a filler layer of PDMS diluted in tert butyl alcohol. Uh, the TBA dilution will allow, um, will actually lower the viscosity of the PDMS solution which then helps decrease the actual overall thickness of the PDMS, as our goal is just to infill the porous structure of these fibers and not to create an additional film layer, which is really important. Um, this PDMS infilling is followed by an oxygen plasma treatment to prepare the surface for inkjet printing of the conductive polymer um, P.PSS. Um, and so the next step is then the actual inkjet printing, um, which is done using a 0.8 weight percent P.PSS ink uh, with a Fujifilm Dymatics printer. Um, then this patterning of the print can be easily adjusted. It, it can be iterated really quickly um, and allows us to create really complex um, electro designs and increase uh, really interesting patterns evolve from this. Um, and so finally, we can, um, the substrate can be flipped over and we can print again um, to create the standard uh, sandwich structure um, that many piezoelectric devices um, have. And then finally, um, we, we end with a, a full encapsulation in PDMS. And so we finish with these really flexible, um, fully polymer uh, inkjet printed devices here. And so next, um, we characterize this, this PDMS infill and the PDOT printing. So on the left, we can see the cross-sectional image uh, from an SEM of a device formed with just straight PDMS um, infill or versus one um, formed with a one-to-one -one dilution of this TBA as the infill. And so we see that the reduction in viscosity from the TBA decreases the thickness of the PDMS layer from approximately 12 micron to approximately six micron. Um, this is really in great agreement with some other papers who have studied the effects of um, diluting PDMS and decreasing its viscosity and it's, it's fine, basically its final effect on film thickness from spin coating. And so this reduced filler layer thickness will help minimize any negative effects the additional insulating layer um, material could have on ca uh, capturing generated charges from the piezoelectric effect. And then on the right, we can see um, the effects of surface treatment on the printing P.ink. And so after the PDMS TBA infill step, 
uh, we the inkjet printing onto the surface leads to this island formation of the inks um, if it's just printed straight on, um, which is troubling. We 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 really want to obviously continue as uniform uh, thin film as the electrode layer. Um, so through an oxygen plasma treat, uh, treatment, just a really simple um, step here, we're able to alter the surface energy of the surface um, just enough so that we're able to get really uniform thin films. Um, and so thus, this OT plasma treatment um, has become a really necessary step before uh, any inkjet printing, but it's also a really simple one. And so with these kind of two steps together, um, we're able to get really uniform uh, thin films. And so next we, we, we want to characterize these, these PDOT films that we've uh, now printed on this um, piezoelectric uh, fibrous PDMS substrate that we have here. And so how we did that was um, actually looking at the effect of multiple layers of printed PDOT on, on this uh, surface. And so we, what we did was we print, printed one centimeter traces of PDOT um, from anywhere from one layer to 10 layers. And the traces were dried for about five minutes between each successive layer. And then the final film was heated for, to, uh, to 50 C uh, for 30 minutes, just to allow to make sure everything is really um, dried and, and uh, solid. And so then if we plot the kind of the resistance versus uh, per centimeter that we see here um, of these PDOT PSS traces, uh, we see a decreasing trend in the resistance of the traces. Um, with increasing number of layers. And so after 10 layers, the printed electrodes drop from over 1,000 um, ohms per centimeter down to about 71 ohms per centimeter. So a very significant drop in resistance. And so this gives us the ability to tune electrode conductivities based on the number of printed layers. And we find this uh, pretty important. And in the future, uh, any of the next, the next devices we end up talking about, we tended to go with a three layer print um, from a time saving uh, perspective, but also we started to see kind of diminishing returns in terms of uh, the, the, the increased conductivities. So to, de to determine the, the actual viability of this process um, in, in, in making actual piezoelectric devices, we fabricated a one centimeter square sandwich structure device with the printed PDOT PSS electrodes on either side. And so a little schematic of the device can be seen on the right side of the figure. Uh, the voltage response of the device was tested using a 1.25 Newton direct impact at a frequency of one hertz, um, just with a standard shaker. Uh, the device showed a similar res voltage response to that of the device actually fabricated using a more standard uh, physical vapor deposition of uh, gold electrodes. Um, so in comparing these two, we, we see that they really have um, really similar outputs in that, that this actual printing of the polymer electrode process is, is a viable alternative to more standard um, electrode uh, deposition. And so then in to actually determination of the, the device's sensitivity to force, um, we did that looking with a really similar, um, same device, same shaker setup, where we looked at a, a both, uh, force range from zero to three Newtons at a frequency of one Hertz. And we see here that uh, with like a linear fit, we get a peak to peak voltage response of uh, 259 millivolts per Newton with an R squared value of 0.87. And so really this is kind of some uh, promising initial data. Uh, future testing will definitely um, look into characterizing this device this further, upon, uh, looking at their frequency responses um, to a bunch of varying for, uh, forces. Um, but again, I think these initial results are promising in terms of showing the viability of these uh, this fabrication method for producing flexible um, all polymer devices. And then finally, uh, one of the key benefits really of utilizing inkjet printing as a fabrication method of electrodes is the ability to actually easily iterate through more advanced patterning. And so to just, we wanted to demonstrate that this is now possible with um, these nanofibrous devices um, using this infill method. Um, so to do that, we actually created a, a really simple two by two array of 0.5 centimeter square individual elements. Um, you can see a schematic of the device on the right here, um, where we labeled each uh, of the four elements in the array, just one through four. And so to, to show that like essentially this, this device also is something that's viable um, and 
is worth pursuing and, and actually works. Um, we did a, just really simple light tapping of each individual element, one through four, with an insulating rod um, and measured their uh, voltage response. And so we do get voltage responses individually from each um, element in the, in the array, showing that in this printing process, we're actually able to produce four separate elements on a, on a single device, um, which again, I think uh, leads to the development of really interesting sensor designs in the future. Um, and so we believe like future studies will definitely um, look into this basic array structure um, being formed and, and looking into the relative sensitivities of each of these elements. But we're, we're happy that we're able to show that we're actually able to pr produce something like this that is um, viable and works. So in conclusion, we've developed a method to allow for inkjet printing of polymer electrodes on PVDF TRFE nanofibers, which previously was only available in thin films due to the the really porous structure and porous nature of the fibers, um, which again, we mentioned uh, the leakage of the, the P-dot electrodes is really the issue here um, that we're solving. And so through this addition of the, this physical separation layer of diluted PMS within the fiber matrix, um, the PMS infill and the printing process were characterized. Basic devices, uh, device functionality was shown by printing these single one centimeter squared devices, and then more advanced patterning was also demonstrated in the fabrication of a two by two array. And so here's a list of some references. And then finally, a thank you to my team members in the Zhang lab um, and our funding sources. And then stop sharing. And then I just, again, I want to thank you all for, for attending my talk today um, on the method for inkjet printing P.PSS polymer electrodes um, on piezoelectric PVDF TRFE fibers for the IEEE FLEPS 2020 virtual conference. Thank you and have a, a good rest of your conference.